Hello YouTube. I uh, just wanted to bring something to your attention to a really quick video here. I've been working with Jonathan Cleck or trying to work with Jonathan Cleck for quite some time on his false serpent seed doctrine. I've even made videos as you can see here uh, exposing uh, the lies and stuff. I'm not really going to get into the depth of that but other than to say he thinks that uh, Satan had sex with uh, Eve and Adam. Um, he equates uh, eating of the forbidden fruit is having sex when the Bible clearly says uh, that Eve said that hey we can eat of any tree of the garden but uh, we just can't eat of this one so you know it, it, that's just madness to, you know to somehow equate uh, eating of a tree um, as a, a sexual thing so uh, beyond that um, I just wanted to uh, say that I've busted Jonathan pretty big time here as far as being a, a hypocrite. Um, you know, he's banned me from his channel. Um, and he sent me a private message. He said, question, why would you have a PayPal link on your channel? And I basically just replied to him that we're missionaries here in the Philippines, that people uh, sometimes ask if they can donate to us, and it's convenient. Um, he also accused me of having a hostile and brutal demeanor, which is a lie. Um, you know, if it, trying to expose a false serpent seed doctrine is, uh, you know, hostile and brutal demeanor, I guess I'm guilty of that. But uh, I was nothing but polite and respectful as I tried to, uh, you know, educate him as to what the scripture says. But he just doesn't want to hear it. He's, you know, in league with Zen uh, Garcia and. Arnold Murray with Shepherd Chapel and his false serpent seed doctrine and he's even uh, come to the point where um, well he's put out all these videos and he's even come to the point where he says we're all fallen angels I mean how crazy is that you know um, so you know here's a video that he's done the deed Adam and Eve plus the serpent uh, equals Cain and so I guess he's implying that we're all dependent descendants of Cain somehow I don't know he, he's his doctrine is all messed up when Matthew 13 is very clear there's the wheat there's the tares and uh, you know one is definitely different than the other so um, but getting back to the, the hypocrisy thing um, like I said he asked you know why would I have a PayPal link on my YouTube channel, which is right here, what's well, clear as day that, you know, we're a ministry here in the Philippines. So, I mean, he has uh, uh, turned around, released another video, and um, he's working on an edit. I guess he's got a few kinks with it. But if you notice right here, he says to give support. You can also support Jonathan Cleck and he gives a link and a donate button and he and then he says right here that uh, or you can simply go to PayPal so you know why is the guy calling me out for having a PayPal link you know trying to get support for my ministry and yet he's doing the same thing that, that's hypocrisy 100 percent so just a quick little thing here I just wanted to go over this and, and show you uh, really quick I apologize but my eyes aren't that great so uh, um, I'm gonna you know go through this really quick and see what the scripture says about hypocrisy and you tell me hey is the guy a hypocrite or not you guys be the judge I'm just trying to do my best to expose him and uh, you know I, I don't disagree with everything the guy says and I've said that and I've made that clear it's in my comments but as far as this serpent seed doctrine it's a lie of the devil so uh, you guys tell me uh, if he's a hypocrite or not after listening to this. Question. What does the Bible say about hypocrisy? Answer. In essence, hypocrisy refers to the act of claiming to believe something but acting in a different manner. The word is derived from the Greek term for actor, literally, one who wears a mask. In other words, someone who pretends to be what he is not. The Bible calls hypocrisy a sin. There are two forms hypocrisy can take that of professing belief in something and then acting in a manner contrary to that belief. 
and that of looking down on others when we ourselves are flawed. The prophet Isaiah condemned the hypocrisy of his day. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Isaiah 29, 13. Centuries later, Jesus quoted this verse, aiming the same condemnation at the religious leaders of his day. Matthew 15, 8-9. John the Baptist refused to give hypocrites a pass telling them to produce fruits worthy of repentance. Luke 3, 8. Jesus took an equally staunch stand against sanctimony. He called hypocrites wolves in sheep's clothing. Matthew 7, 15. Whitewashed tombs. Matthew 23, 27. Snakes and brood of vipers. Matthew 23, 33. We cannot say we love God if we do not love our brothers. 1 John 2, 9. Love must be without hypocrisy. Romans 12, 9. NKJV. A hypocrite may look righteous on the outside, but it is a facade. True righteousness comes from the inner transformation of the Holy Spirit, not an external conformity to a set of rules. Matthew 23. 5. 2 Corinthians 3. 8. Jesus addressed the other form of hypocrisy in the Sermon on the Mount. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the bank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Matthew 7, 3-5. Jesus is not teaching against discernment or helping others overcome sin. Instead, he is telling us not be so prideful and convinced of our own goodness that we criticize others from a position of self-righteousness. We should do some introspection first and correct our own shortcomings before we go after the specs in others. CF. Romans 2. 1. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he had many run-ins with the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees. These men were well versed in the scriptures and zealous about following every letter of the law. Acts 26. 5. However, in adhering to the letter of the law, they actively sought loopholes that allowed them to violate the spirit of the law. Also, they displayed a lack of compassion toward their fellow man and were often overly demonstrative of their so-called spirituality in order to garner praise. Matthew 23, 5-7, Luke 18, 11. Jesus denounced their behavior in no uncertain terms, pointing out that justice, mercy, and faithfulness are more important than pursuing a perfection based on faulty standards. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus made it clear that the problem was not with the law but the way in which the Pharisees implemented it. Matthew 23, 2-3. Today, the word Pharisee has become synonymous with hypocrite. It must be noted that hypocrisy is not the same as taking a stand against sin. For example, it is not hypocrisy to teach that drunkenness is a sin. Unless the one teaching against drunkenness gets drunk every weekend, that would be hypocrisy, as children of God. We are called to strive for holiness. 1 Peter 1 16. We are to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Romans 12, 9. We should never imply an acceptance of sin, especially in our own lives. All we do should be consistent with what we believe and who we are in Christ. Play acting is meant for the stage, not for real life. So there you go. I think it's pretty clear. I'll just go over this one more time. It says, Today the word Pharisee has become synonymous with a hypocrite and uh, in the message here he you know flat called me um, a Pharisee <clears throat> if you read these uh, uh, comments so um, you know I don't know I feel sorry for the guy he, he's uh, See here he says here, he says, I'm sorry, but your hostility as well as your erroneous position is nothing short of a Pharisee. So he basically just called me a Pharisee slash hypocrite. So basically I'm just, you know, casting that back onto you, Jonathan, because I think the word is pretty well proven. Who's the hypocrite here? Okay? You got a PayPal link, I got a PayPal link. I've got a mission to do here in the Philippines. You've got your thing to do there in the States. You know, I'm not against all of your doctrines. Some of your doctrines are truly amazing, you know, there's some of the things that you've come up with, but some of it is just of the devil, bro. 
I don't know how to say it any other way. So I love you. I keep you in my prayers. I got other people praying for you. We're talking about you. But you know what? You're just off track on this issue. And you need to stop it. You need to repent of it. And you need to stop uh, spreading this, this doctrine of demons. So with that, God bless. And uh, everybody listening, stay away from this guy. You know, or at least be very, very careful what you accept and what you don't accept because not everything Jonathan teaches is biblical at all. When it said Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bare Cain, it didn't say anything about, you know, she was jumped in the sack with Satan. It uses the same exact verbiage when Cain knew his wife and um, she conceived. So, you know, he, he's just all over the map as far as the serpent seed doctrine. And uh, so you guys pray for him, please, please, please. Um, there's a lot of good in Jonathan, but um, there's also some pretty serious kinks. With that, God bless you, and uh, thank you very much for listening. Take care now. Bye-bye.